Well, folks, here we go. Lockdown lunacy continues. Just about to cut Fran's hair. I must be mad, mustn't I? I'm so desperate, though. What can go wrong? As long as I don't look like you. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see these bits it here? It can't be that difficult, can it? I want it, look, I've got those bits there, yeah. and then those bits down there, so it all needs to be... Yeah. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just going to just go gentle, don't worry. And there's, like... That doesn't need to have anything of it. It's no. this bit here, yeah. isn't it? That needs you, you know what you're doing. I, can, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Could you uh, just put your head up? There you go. <laughs> Going somewhere nice tonight. <laughs> I've seen this done before. <laughs> Jess looking, look. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of time, Jess. The dogs Jess. are looking at absolute fear because they know that they're next. You've got any good recommendations where I can get my nails done? <laughs> <laughs> Do your own nails. Oh my God, that sounds a bit hacky. It's not, I'm only taking that much off now. Oh, okay. It's just these scissors aren't that sharp. They're for dog's hair, really, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> because in the hairdressers, that would all get clipped up and then they do one layer and then pull the rest down and do the next layer. Yeah. They don't all hack it in one go. No. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's still doing hedge trimming as a gardener. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh, what was that all for? What no, did you... that's okay, yeah. It's quite nerve-wracking, you know. <laughs> You try Stay sitting still. here. You try sitting here if you think it's nerve wracking there. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> it's nerve wracking. <laughs> Some struggly bits they need dealing with. Try the pudding basin. <laughs> do you? No. <laughs> I might do it when I'm finished, yeah. I might be wearing a pudding basin. Go and dry that and Let's see what it there. looks like. Do a twirl for the viewers. Yeah. <laughs> I think it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright because I had all these bits down here that kept getting all curly. So they're gone. That's alright. It's a bit square. But it will do. It seems that somebody thinks our roof is the breakfast table. Goose just landed on top with a huge thump and started eating my plants. What a cheek. Well, it's a fantastic day today. Apparently it's going to get up to about 25 degrees this afternoon. So it's just before lunchtime and uh, I've been working on the boat yet again. I've uh, done another bit of painting on the back and uh, just priming the exposed bits ready to paint the red. I had to cut back the grass along the side of the boat so I can get to the hull and here comes our friend wafting her way along the towpath with something she's foraged in her hands what have you been up to? I've had a lovely walk and uh, I've picked some of this which is uh, um, mare's tail or horse tail it's a really, really ancient plant. Goes back to dinosaur era. And it's really interesting because it's otherwise known as the Lego plant because if you pull it apart like this, you can actually join it together. That's not going to work, is it? <laughs> Hours of endless you can, fun. <laughs> you can pull it apart and you can actually rejoin it, rebuild it together. Will it grow again? Why is the no, point? No, it's mm. just a kid's thing, isn't it? That's no. not working very well, but you can rebuild it. But the thing about um, this horsetail, mare's tail, is it grows everywhere. It's just such a vigorous so-called weed, but it's um, something like 10% silicon, and you can feel that. It's really, really rough. So it's got loads and loads of uses. I think you can make 
um, hair condition, all sorts of stuff for it. One of the things it's really good for is because of the silicon, it's used for polishing and you can finish uh, wood off with it, it gives it a lovely sheen and also polishing metal but um, I'm going to have a go, I'm cleaning the cooker today which is really boring, we haven't got any proper cleaning stuff so I'm going to see if it will clean the glass and the cooker um, and have a go, you can feel it, it's gritty so yeah, there's loads and loads of it well I've picked myself a nice big bunch well I think I'd rather be out here painting well so would I actually <laughs> but uh, you know, it's got to be done so Uh, do you fancy a bike ride? I've got to go down to the shop. Beer is the order of the day. So uh, I thought I'd let you tag along with me. I've uh, got my helmet, got my shoes on. I'm going to put the GoPro in the case and film me going along. So I'm going up the towpath to the bridge and then down the road into town and then on the way back I'll come up the old railway track, the Middlewood Way. So about three miles all in all, it's nothing too adventurous. I love this bike. It's a steel frame, no suspension, no gears, single speed. And uh, I just love riding it. It's such a great bike. I've had it for about 10 years, just over 10 years now. And uh, I just love it. Lots of people have suggested I get a fold-up bike. But to be honest, I'll just take the front wheel off this and she sits in the engine room just right. And uh, somebody even suggested I get an e-bike, a bike with a motor on it. I just perish the thought. There'll be a few years yet before I need one of those, hopefully. Three bottles of beer, various other things, bananas and such, the bag weighs a ton. So it's gonna be a bit of a slower ride on the way back, I think. Anyway, here goes. ride standing on the pedals <laughs> oh man alive hello doggies well, that wasn't so bad as I thought still to exercise the old lungs somewhat Last time I rode my bike a few days ago, I came back gasping for breath. Asthma had got the better of me, but today it's fine. I had a good suck on the old puffer before I went, as you do. And uh, yeah, I feel great. 
So it uh, cools down, we might go out for a longer ride later. Well, I'm really impressed with uh, this um, mare's tail. I don't know if I couldn't find a proper recipe of how to use it. So I've just dipped it in soapy water and scrubbed away. The cooker was pretty rotten actually, and it's coming up. It's just got the glass lovely and clean. So all I've done is made a sort of a scouring pad out of it and scrubbed away. And then I'm polishing it off with a little bit of uh, vinegar spray. She's going to come out now. So yeah, I'm quite impressed, you know, chemical free, cost free. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is when we've cleaned the chimney out and the fireplace and everything out, the stove out, I'm going to have a go at the stove glass because it's such a gentle cleaner, um, abrasive. I think it might be good for the glass. So we'll have a go. Yes, I'm, I'm dead impressed. A lot of people have been asking about my weaving and about the loom um, so I thought while we're on a rainy day and I'm going to do some weaving I'd give you a little guided tour. So this is my sowry loom which is folded up normally it would stand here against the boat. Um, when I want to weave I literally unhook hook at the bottom of it and it folds out into my loom. One of the great things about Sauri is that the warp threads, which are these longitudinal threads, come pre-wound on this roller. Um, you can make your own, but it's um, just so much easier. I can just buy up to about 60 metres of, of warp thread, just ready wound, and I just pop it on the loom. Um, and so once the loom is set up, I won't go, it's quite complicated. All the threads have to be thread threaded through these heddles which are attached to pedals and move the threads up and down to give the weaving effect. This was set up for scarves and if you can see these warp threads are quite widely spaced. Today I think I'm going to make a wall hanging which I need to be tighter so the first thing I've got to do is move all of these threads in which is probably going to take me about an hour. So I have the warp threads all set up now, tied onto this end of the loom, ready to wind round. And as you can see, they're all quite nice, evenly spaced and quite close together, which is ideal for a wall hanging. I've actually got um, under this sofa, we've got storage and the whole of the under the sofa is full of yarn. Much of it I pick up in charity shops um, and there's a charity business over in Hereford or Herefordshire where, um, they recycle yarns and all the money goes towards the charity and a lot of it comes from there but you can weave with anything and I've got all these boxes of bits and pieces you can weave with pieces of fabric I've got old pieces of lace and stuff in here pieces of wire ribbon um, this is obviously actually a bit of boat rope <laughs> which I'm unraveling and I shall weave into the fabric which makes it um, quite arty. We've got raw wool here, or dried um, wool. So for clothing I tend to just stick purely to natural fibres if I can but for the wool hangings I get a bit carried away. You need sparkly bits and buttons and beads and so anything goes. But once I've got these bobbins wound up in my colours I'll bring you back and just show you a little bit of how the weaving works. So I'm just about finished now um, weaving through the shuttle. Um, as you can see I've woven all extra little pieces in here 
Wall hangings are very, very different to the scarves. You don't have time to do all these little bits on the scarf. It would just take forever. So I think, yeah, I think I'm just about done. So I can unhook this and then we'll just cut it off when I'm finished and tie all the ends up. I'll go and find a nice piece of wood to um, sand down and polish and tie it to and that will be a wall hanging. Um, and that's how it works. The frame, sowie frame will just now fold up, go back against the wall. I'm going to get my book out. So that's it, we'll tie it up and um, finish it off and tomorrow I should be able to put that on the Etsy site.